Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another tutorial. I want to apologize from the get-go um, if I sound like I'm tired or I can't breathe or if I'm talking slow. I recently had my appendix removed a couple days ago and I'm still recovering. But I wanted to make this video for you guys uh, specifically for the Houdini and to Gaia community out there because there's been some changes that have resolved some problems for some people using the Houdini bridge. And I'm hoping that this video will help you guys kind of move about navigating that workflow a little bit easier if it works for you. I've tested it a few times and it's worked for me. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the knowledge that was shared with me with by other people in the Discord and the Houdini forums. And then I'm going to show you how to set up your Gaia uh, tour project and then Houdini to get this to work. So first I need to shout out uh, a member of the Discord, Pete. He showed me where to make some certain changes in the Gaia SOP regarding the fixes that the Houdini community came up with inside of Houdini to fix this problem. So thank you, Pete. I appreciate that. Second is the labs uh, forum here that I've been following for a while now. This change by um, E2 Mainframe. Shout out to you as well. Apologize if you don't want to be shout out, but there it is. Um, provided a change in the syntax that we need to make inside of Houdini for things to work. So I'm going to show you how to go about doing all of that uh, so you don't have to worry about figuring it out yourself. The The last thing is is a, another member named um, Bleak shared a HDALC file, which you're going to need to download to open up in Houdini to get this to work. And you're going to use this one right here. Um, it's one that bleak posted with the color correction all you have to do is just make sure that you read the instructions on how to use this from bleak here and then you can also read the instructions here uh, or some changes that bleak made to the hdalc um, but the one that you're going to want to download is this one right here so that was posted on may 11th the first one was posted on may 9th you can probably ignore that one the one you want is from May 11th, 2022. All right, once you have that downloaded, let's go ahead and open up Gaia. I already have a project set up, so hopefully this will work for you guys. It worked for me. Hopefully the universe doesn't make me look like an idiot when I try to show you guys that it works. It does that sometimes, but hopefully it will. All right, first things first, you need to have at least a file node and an output node. And the reason why is because Houdini is going to be generating a file that's going to be read by Gaia, that's going to be inputted into this file node, ran through these filters, depending on the changes that you make in Houdini, and then it's going to output that file back out to your computer so Houdini can read it and input it into the viewport in Houdini. So you need to have at least a file and an output node. After that, you can build your Tor file however you want using things like color nodes and mask selections and things like that. It, it should work for this. Those should work with this process. You're going to have to expose node parameter properties uh, for it to work. So in the file node, just select it, go to the hamburger menu in the properties panel and go to expose node. You'll get this window that pops up and you have to expose at least the file uh, parameter here. You can name it however you want here. Some nodes you have to name uh, specific ways for them to be read by Houdini. Um, the file node, you don't have to worry about that. It should work if you just select file, it should auto name it here. Just make sure that you read the instructions uh, that Bleak made uh, with <laughs> this update this updated HDALC file. Um, so you need at least the file selected. Next, all the other nodes that you want your parameters exposed for. So in the uh, cells effect, I have the scale, the chaos, and the seed, and I just have them named as such. In the erosion, I have just the duration, rock softness, and strength. Now, if you wanted to um, expose the seed here. You already have a seed value named in the cells exposed property names. So if you don't name this as something else, it won't work. 
um, you have to change this to something like seed underscore erosion uh, or erosion underscore seed for it to be read properly. Um, and it won't change the seeds for everything in your project. So uh, just make sure that you remember that. So if you have anything that is similar, similar names, so like a lot of properties inside of Gaia have scale, seed, maybe strength as similar names uh, in their properties, just make sure you put like strength cells, underscore cells, or strength underscore erosion. So the, the XML file names those property and Houdini knows that those are gonna be separate uh, separate settings in the XML file that will apply to different nodes. Just remember that. Now for the output, you're going to have the path. And again, that's just the minimum. You need to have at least path selected here or else it's not going to work. Okay, after that, you're going to save it. I already have it saved as test.tor, but I'm going to save it again. And then what you're going to do after that is you're going to navigate to your install location for um, Gaia. For me, that's going to be here in the C drive in the quad spinner folder. And you're going to right click or hold down shift, right click. And if you're in Windows 11, you're going to click on show more options. In Windows 10 and below, it should come up with open PowerShell window here. Click on that so it'll open up a PowerShell window in this directory so you don't have to navigate to it manually. Trust me, it's a lot easier if you just do it that way. Uh, you could probably navigate to it manually if you want, if you're into that thing, but I'm not. I already have a window here open. So uh, disregard this. That was from an earlier attempt of this video, but I just started getting into a little bit more pain and I didn't finish it, so now I'm just starting from scratch. What we're going to do in this window is we're going to generate a XML file that Houdini will read. And you have to do that by telling PowerShell what um, where, what you want to run and where you want to save it and what it is that you're saving. So I guess I will start this from scratch. Okay, so it'll just be a clean window. All right, the reason why we're opening it in this window is because the build, uh, the Gaia.build.exe is here. If you double click on that, It'll give you a list of commands you can run in this PowerShell. The only one that we're really interested in for testing is the dash dash node map. Um, but here you can find what it is that you can run for like automation and overrides and stuff like that. Ow. Okay. So, um, yeah, well, let's go back to the, the PowerShell here. And you're going to do, and this is very important, make sure you follow this syntax exactly as shown here. If you do not do the dot backslash, it won't be recognized as a commandlet. PowerShell won't run it, and it won't work. So you have to tell PowerShell that this, I believe the proper phrasing for this, I could be wrong, is, is that it's an external program that needs to run, and the dot backslash is what tells PowerShell that it's external and should run this program, this exe, and save what it is you're telling it to do in this directory, and this is what you're telling it to do. So all we're doing is we're telling Gaia.build.exe to save the node map in this location right there. And the quotations at the beginning and end of your directory is very important, and the spelling of the program you're running is very important. Make sure you follow it capital for capital, period for period, so on and so forth. I'm, if you guys have problems running this and your spelling is accurate and, uh, or if your spelling is not accurate, it's not gonna work. Uh, and I don't want to spend hours trying to troubleshoot bad syntax because I've already done that. I do that for a living and I hate doing it. So please double check your spelling before you make a comment saying it doesn't work because if you typed it all out correctly, this should work. If you made a mistake somewhere, figure it out. Trust me, it, it, you might have even had put a space somewhere where you probably didn't want a space, like at the beginning. So maybe you did space dot slash, and it might not work. I don't know if that's the case for PowerShell. That could be. So just make sure that you have it all typed out here properly and within the proper syntax, all that stuff. Okay. 
run that, you'll get this little build window. Don't worry if it sits here forever, it's done. It already generated your XML file. It doesn't take a lot of processing power to generate an XML file. It'll just stay here forever. If you need to rerun it for whatever reason, you can just up arrow and you can run it again and it'll spit out another XML file. But we already have it. Here's our XML. It uh, generated it with all the new properties that we need uh, to be added. So let's go ahead and open that up. You can see here. Those are the exposed parameters. Um, we have our rock softness, strength, our seed, um, the seed here for the cells. This is the seed for the erosion. The variable is set as erosion seed. So that should pop up as two different variables inside of Houdini. So if we change one, it won't change the other. Um, it should change them all separately. All right, we can close that now. And let's go ahead and open up Houdini. Now, if you downloaded the fixed HDALC file. All you have to do is just double click on that. Houdini should be seeing that as a Houdini file. Uh, it should load it up and it will set things up properly for you inside of Houdini. Um, we just have to make small changes from here. So I'll walk you through those. I already have a test scene set up here with a height field and height field noise. So this is what we're making in Houdini. This is what we're sending back to Gaia to process with the erosion and the cells and then spitting it back out to Houdini. But I'm not gonna worry about that just yet. I'm gonna show you what we need to do to make sure that we have everything set up in the uh, Gaia SOP. So um, if you need to make those these two things, by the way, all you do is right click. Uh, so hold on real quick. Um, if we go all the way out, it should auto generate a um, geo for you. Um, if it doesn't for whatever reason, just right click type in geo make a geo node and then double click on that and then here load up your height field uh your height noise uh we can just do noise uh, height field noise and then gaia and then the processor fix um you might have to load that up individually hopefully you don't because i'm not entirely sure how to do that in houdini because it just worked for me the way i thought it would so um but i'm not going to go into that we're just going to delete all this and we're going to stick with this one okay so we loaded in the um the processor the the gaia sop fix uh what you need to do now is you have to make it editable so we can go in and change the value that we need to change you right click on the sop go to uh it's not going to be located here because it's already set up for that. So uh, let me just reload this one. You go here <clears throat> and click on allow editing of contents. After you do that, you'll get this red lock that is unlocked. Let's go ahead and double click on that. And then in here, it'll probably be zoomed out for you, but you're just gonna zoom in right up here in the export uh, nodes. Click on the export Python script here. That's what this icon is, is Python script. And what we're looking for is this line right here on line 30. We're going to change that to the one that's in the forum. So the one in the forum is at the very bottom. Thanks again to E2 mainframe. We're gonna copy this one, Control C. We're gonna go back to Houdini and we're going to replace this one the one in the form. So it changed it from, uh, it's a very small change, um, but it's, you have to make sure that you do it right. It's going to be array dot from string to array dot from bytes. It's important because that bytes is what is new and this from string is the deprecated one. So we're just going to make sure that this is the right one as a dot from bytes, not array dot from bytes, but you see it there. Just copy that one. And then from here, um, you can go to the uh, gear here and you can save it as a permanent default for this Gaia SOP. And then it'll show up in your list of, um, it'll either be saved for the default Gaia SOP. Sorry, it just hurts to breathe and I have to do that often. Everybody needs to, I suppose. Or you can save it as a preset so you can have the original one and as well as this new one. I'm not gonna save it because I already have it saved. Um, so I'm going to go back, 
And now we have the Gaia Tor processor fix, as well as the Python script change that's required for the new version of Python that Houdini is using that has the deprecated one, so uh, deprecated syntax. Now from here we have to load our preset directory. That'll be where we saved our Tor file and our XML file. So that's going to be on my desktop in test. We're going to go ahead and check use preset. Now Houdini will read the XML file and spit out the different parameters here. And as you can see here, we have cells, the seed here, and then the erosion and the seed here. So hopefully that doesn't change the seed of the cells, but I guess we'll find out. Um, now we can start making changes. So let's go ahead and increase the scale of our cells, the duration of our erosion, the strength as well. And let's go ahead and before we do that, one more thing, we have to make sure that we have the Gaia SOP here set for render. If we don't have that set properly, it's not going to show up in the viewport and we won't be able to see our changes. So if you want to see that, you just click the button right here, this blue one, this one's pink and so on and so forth. We just want the blue one selected. If you hover over it, it'll say display render. If you don't do that, say we had our height field selected, we won't see any change and you can move down through here to see the changes. So uh, there's no changes shown now because I didn't cook it. So to see if this worked, we click on cook. Now Houdini will do some processing. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we also have two more things we need to do. I totally forget this part all the time. Uh, we have to tell Gaia what to read, and then we also have to tell Gaia what to send back to Houdini. So that'll be the file here and the output here. So since we're working on our height map, all we're going to be sending is the height data for both the file and the output. So we're sending this height file, the one that Houdini made. So we have to make sure we have set that height. And then we also want the height file sent back to us that Gaia processed with the scales, or the, not the scales, sorry, the cells and the erosion. So for the output, we want it to send back to Houdini the height as well. Now it should cook. Unless it makes me a fool. There we go. So now we have the uh, cells as well as the erosion being applied right here. Um, the resolution is really small, so uh, if we wanted better resolution, I imagine we change that in the height field, in the size. So having a power of 2 would probably be what we want. So let's do 1024 by uh, 1024. That might be what we need to do. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, then we can cook that again, and then we can see if that works which it did. All right. So now again, if you didn't have it set to render, this is all you would see. So make sure that you have the Gaia Tor processor set to render. Now we can take the scales of the, uh, the not the scale. Oh my geez. Uh, yeah, the scale of the cells down. So we have very small cells and then let's just increase the duration of the erosion and the strength as well. We're just going to increase these quite a bit. So we get a bit more erosion look, um, and then less of the cells. Go ahead and cook that. So now you can start editing your height fields in Houdini using the awesome effects that you get inside of Gaia. So you can build cooler looking landscapes and uh, better textured landscapes, better mass, mask selections, so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to reduce the duration and the strength just so you can see that it is working with the erosion again. Um, now that's a good pipeline to use. It's very powerful. You can get some really good effects inside of your favorite 3D application. Um, but uh, just remember, I am not the one that should be taking credit for any of these fixes. I've shouted out the proper names for the people who have provided them. I'm just making the video <clears throat> in my sorry state of existence right now. So you guys can benefit from not having to research it all over the place. I'll put a link to the uh, to the side effects form where you can find the required files and changes. I'll also link to my Discord uh, and the Gaia Discord if you want to join both of those. And other than that, there's not nothing much else to say. Go ahead and test this out, play around with it, have fun, and I'll see you guys in the next one.